Well, thank you. You know, I have to say, it is really quite inspiring to be here and see how many people are in this room, and yet there were another hundred or something like that who, who wanted to attend. And when we talk about the vision for uh, Santa Cruz Tech, that so many people want to be a part of it and make it happen is, is really inspiring. You know, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Really, uh, you know, it's just a coincidence. We're here to dream in, and the opening song was about love. But I, but I, I'm a big believer in positive energy, and I believe it all kind of stems, at the end of the day, from dreams, and from love. And um, and I think you have to bring those things uh, into what you're trying to build as, as a company. Um, it doesn't mean that there's not some real business to be done, but at the same time, we have to start with a dream of how we're making the world a better place. It's how we add value to society. It's how we do something that when we go home and we're talking to our kids, uh, we're proud of what we're doing. It's how all the people in your organization feel that there's purpose, something that really matters to what they're doing. If you don't have that, you don't have the foundation for the kind of positive energy that you need. You know, the story is, across the United States, only three out of 10 people actually care very much about what they do with their work. And they're not very fulfilled, and it's a tragedy. In technology, there's no excuse for that. We have every opportunity to have people really care, have the opportunity to make a difference, and to make those things happen. And that's the, that's the chance that we have in front of us. I think when you talk about uh, the love side, I wanna, you know, it goes across a couple dimensions. Number one, I believe your customers feel whether or not you love them, okay? At Plantronics, we put in together a whole bunch of policies. One of them is, I never ever controlled, when I was running the company, um, our customer service agents. They could do absolutely anything to take care of a customer. It had incredible dividends for us. You all heard the story about a happy customer tells multiple people, unhappy customer tells multiple people. I would hear from everybody, from salespeople at our distributors, from end customers, that they were going to be loyal to us because of something that happened when they called in online. And we've won millions of dollars of business because of that. That customer love doesn't happen if the people giving it don't feel the love, okay? It just has to extend across the organization. The people in the organization can tell whether or not you care. And if you care, and if you're on a mission together, you start to get some really great positive energy. You start to feel in the organization that everybody's together in one team. And that is a wonderful thing. I have to say that as much as, you know, tech can get accused of being self-indulgent, you know, you wish in some of the issues that have happened in San Francisco with the buses and all this kind of stuff, it is my hope and dream that in Santa Cruz, we will not have that. I'd like to see this community be even more tightly integrated, more connections between people, that most of the people, there's not that big a room when you think about it, could get to know each other, and that we as a community, okay, as a tech community within this community, can be known and recognized for having a positive influence on the community itself. I think when you're um, a startup, okay, it's tough, okay? You have to make the business successful. But in all honesty, even when you're an established business, you have to keep driving, and it's still tough. But it, if you do things that show that you care about the community, it actually makes a difference to your people as well. We did surveys at the company, and people did care that we were involved in Second Harvest, that we were involved in a lot of other organizations. Because at the end of the day, it also shows what you're made of inside. It kind of shows the genuineness that you either have or you don't have. And I think it's very important. I think, um, I'd like to tell you a kind of a, a quick story. Um, this is uh, about a guy who's in a hot air balloon. And is that four minutes already? Oh, really? Well, I didn't time this. Um, so I'll be really fast with this story. He's in a hot air balloon. And he sees somebody down below, and he says, hey, um, where am I? And the guy says, well, you're at longitude 32, latitude 41, you're at a height of uh, 1,000 meters over sea level. And I said, you know, you must be an engineer. 
Um, he said, well, that's right, how do you know? Well, because you're just giving me an accurate answer that is absolutely no use to me whatsoever. <laughs> and the uh, engineer then says, well, that's uh, correct. You must be a CEO. <laughs> and he says, well, that's correct. How, how do you know? This is, well, you don't know where you are. You don't know where you're going. Therefore, you have to be a CEO. Um, and somehow, it's all my fault. Um, the, the importance of that is really about humility. Because uh, if you are doing something, if you are chasing a dream, you got to be listening. Because it can't be your own dream. It's got to be your customer's dream. You got to be able to pivot and adjust. You know, we're in a Darwinian model, and things just keep changing all the time. And I think on the one hand, you got to be successful, but on the other hand, the key skill you need is to be able to keep adapting the business. Thank you. Sorry to be over there.